Welcome or welcome back to Y Gaming. Today we're going to be talking about something going around the Generation Zero community. Now this has popped up on the Generation Zero forums and it is a video. This video is brilliant and it breaks down every single thing that the community have wanted for Generation Zero. This is a hot topic. There's a lot of criticism in here over how GC has been handled over the past few years. This video is quite possibly the best breakdown of everything that has happened now i'd highly recommend heading over to the channel to check it out the link is in the description down below i'm not going to show the full video i want you to go over to his channel and check it out this guy is slam he's covered loads and loads of generation zero stuff in the past as you can see he's got a decent back catalog of generation zero and other titles definitely head over there and subscribe check out the full video the full video is titled generation zero the game that could have been and it's great. There's some absolutely amazing points in there. So I just want to talk about mainly this video overall and my thoughts on it. Now, having watched it, it is 16 minutes long. There's some really good stuff in there. It is broken down into chapters, going over everything that has gone on and what the overall thoughts and feelings are of the past sort of four to five years. And it is quite possibly the best way of it being broken down. I couldn't have said anything better myself, and I believe a lot of the community feels exactly the same way. The forums are popping off over this one. Over the past few days, there's been tons of stuff on there, people definitely agreeing and backing up everything that has been said. Even Connie has jumped on and said that a lot of these points are great, which is brilliant. It's great news that the developers have seen this video. And I do hope that they continue to look into what this guy has said and what the community is saying. They're not listening to the community at this point. It's a lot of cash grabby, money grabbing, pushing shit out the door for the sake of pushing shit out the door. Now, Connie does say that he can understand the frustration that a lot of players are feeling and would love to see another island or more story added to GZ. Thanks for speaking up in a structured and civil manner. I believe you will like what we're working on for the next update. But this goes back to what Zlam says in his video, that a lot of these updates are just filibuster and pushing out content for the sake of selling micro DLCs, which is something I have been saying for a very long time, and I do agree. These updates do feel very lackluster, but it seems like they put more effort into the micro DLCs that go alongside the update. And... It's like, oh, here's a good update that people will enjoy. But to get the most out of it, you will need to pay four, five, six, seven, eight dollars to get these micro DLCs, to get these weapon packs, which is just a smack in the teeth to the loyal community that are following Generation Zero and have been for many years. At the moment, the numbers are not that great. As you can see, there has been a gain, but players are slowly dropping off, averaging around 300 at the moment. A couple of weeks ago, it was four, five hundred. So unless they start to bring out better updates, I don't think the game is going to last in 2025 at all. I don't even know if we'll make it to 2025. There is no news on when this update will be. Hopefully, we do hear something relatively soon. But when it comes to Zam's video, he talks mainly about the weapon packs and them being, as I've mentioned, mainly filibuster and having no substance to them. And I completely agree with that. The game needs more substance. It needs more of a storyline. When the game did first launch, it felt eerie. You wanted to go out and explore things and figure out what was happening in the world of Osterton. But unfortunately, that just seemed to go away with each update. Each update added more and more things. And by sort of mid-2020 to early 2021, we started to see a drop-off in that really cool storyline element we got a couple of main dlcs added but they added not too much in forms of substance the two story dlcs that we've seen obviously him the alpine unrest dlc and the phoenix rising dlc they were absolutely outstanding added loads of story especially the alpine unrest dlc that added a whole new island to go and explore and that is something that the team needs to do again the only way to bring GZ back into some decent numbers is to add what people want, and that's not weapon packs. It seems like the Generation Zero Discord is a part of that problem. It is mainly an echo chamber. When there is an announcement of some sort, everybody gets really excited about the micro DLC that will be coming with it, 
And that is not good. That is just encouraging the team to bring out more shit that doesn't actually enforce the game at all and make it better in any substantial kind of way. All that does is just line the devs' pockets, which, yeah, great. They need money to continue to make the game better. Now, there is a small section in Zlam's video talking about mods and mod support. I think mod support would be something that was great for Generation Zero and greatly extend the lifespan of the game. Look at any Bethesda title that have mod support. Those games have continued for years and years with very substantial numbers, even a decade after launch, which is great. Now, there has been some changes to the U EULA, the End User License Agreement, which is a legal document that you sign for most things, really, uh, most live service games and most games in general, and they are basically the terms and conditions. Most people don't read it, they just click yes, accept. And that is a very small part of Zlam's video, going over the fact that Neebs Gaming did use mods. Now, well, they say that they allowed them to use mods. But Carney has cleared that up and said that they did not allow them. It was a special access build, which allowed things like no herd, free cam, all of that stuff. And yes, they have said that the community size of Neebs has allowed them to give them the powerful build that the team have. And obviously, when it comes to mods, people have been told off for mods in forums, group chats and things like that beforehand, which... It's strange. I don't understand why they are not a fan of it. Uh, Carney does say in his video, in his response here, that it's not something that you can just flip a switch. Which, yeah, that's fine. But if they did announce that they were working on something like that, mod support for the game, that would give a lot of hope to a lot of players because things would be made. We'd be able to see much more um, DLCs. We'd be able to see much more content coming to the game from the community that love it. And I think that would be a great way to extend the lifespan of the game. But that very small section of Zlam's video, which is only a minute long, talking about mods, that is the, the biggest response here. And I, there was a lot more in the video that could have been spoken about. A lot more valid criticism that should have been addressed rather than just that mods and the uh, the favoritism. And I understand why, why they do it. You know, they've got to get this game out to as many eyeballs as possible at this stage of its lifespan. And I completely agree with that. You know, that that's Marketing 101, get as many eyeballs on it as possible. But yes, giving them a build that normal players don't have access to is a little bit of a sort of... Mm, because you're giving those players a false representation of what the game actually is, unless you're clearly stating in that video that these are mods or a special build, which I've not watched Neve's video, so I'm not 100% sure on that. But yes, it was a build. It wasn't exactly a mod. But even still, mods are something that is very taboo. Even in the uh, the the license agreement, there was a section beforehand that not so much strictly prohibits the use of mods, but is very very much frowned upon. And yes, mods can have some detrimental effects on your game itself. But I do think still the the benefits of mods outweigh the negatives but the uh, the end user license agreement appears to have changed so much over the years it's very fuzzy as to whether or not you can use mods now here is a little bit of a breakdown that jojo the meme dealer awesome dude he's in the discord um has done of the uh, the end user license agreement i recommend heading over to the forums and reading this in full there's pretty interesting stuff in there but there has been changes backwards and forwards and part of the modding situation has been removed or added back in. But yeah, definitely worth heading over there and having a read. The links to Zam's video and the forum are in the description down below if you do want to check this thread out. So I do believe the issue of modding is something that is, is really all over the actual forums in regards to this video. But there's a lot more great stuff in there for the actual gameplay itself and very valid criticisms like the endless grind that Zlam talks about which is true once you've got through that main storyline once you've got a couple of good bits it is it all the game is is just grinding the same thing over and over again those weekly missions that they introduced are the same six or seven missions i can't remember the exact number off the top of my head but they're just repeatable over and over again it's the same thing there's nothing new and yeah it's it is very boring and i do feel like at the moment, their Discord is very much an echo chamber. And I, I have mentioned this before, and a lot of people in my Discord have mentioned this before. And it's just seems like 
every time they announce something in there, everybody gets really, really hyped up for like the little micro DLCs, all the little bits. And there is no sort of feedback that gets taken on board from what I've seen. Now, people have said I'm not in the actual Generation Zero Discord. I am in there. I've been in there since the game started. I just don't comment. Same with most Discords. I very rarely use Discord. I read it for updates and things like that. But I don't communicate in there. Um, my form of communication with most people is normally Twitter and X. Uh, other than close personal friends and a couple of people that I play with every now and then, Discord would really be my only use. But I do read things on there. Overall, if the game does continue down this path, it's not going to last much longer. I do think Zlam's video is an absolutely outstanding overview of everything that's going on at the moment and more people need to see this video so if you haven't seen it it is linked in the description down below highly recommend heading over to his channel watching the video in full some really great points in there articulated really really well and just put across in a decent way he's not slamming the devs not slamming anybody at all it's just true thoughts and feelings for the vast majority of the generation zero community and watch it subscribe to his channel also whilst you're here drop a like on this video subscribe to this channel all the links you need are in the description down below for now though thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed and we'll see you very soon with some more generation zero